Hi, everybody. We are live. Welcome to Sunday Night Live Stream. Uh, tonight, we are going to be talking about everybody's favorite subject, which is weight stalls, plateaus, all that stuff. Uh, I have a couple of quick announcements first. I want to welcome our two moderators, Bonnie and Melissa. They are in the chat. They will provide links. Uh, they have a little wrench beside their name so you can tell that they're a moderator. And uh, yeah, so they're they're just uh, just so you know who they are if if they're putting in links that it's it's all good, um, and uh, we have a giveaway tonight. It is Element, and in order to enter the giveaway, you just have to type in Salt in the comments. Now, um, so the way that the giveaway tool works is even if you type in Salt ten times, which some people do. You, there's only one entry. The The tool figures out that you've already entered. So so you, no need to type it in many times. Uh, just type it in once. Uh, and the other thing to know about it is that if you're watching this as a replay, say a week from now, the giveaway has already happened. And, and so no need to type in salt. Um, but, you know, do tune in for the next one. I try to do a couple of giveaways every month. Um, we have a video of the week this week, and it actually ties into some of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, if you were with me last week, Coach Bronson was here. Uh, it's always so great to talk to him. Now, we talked about uh, one, one topic was principles before protocols. He has an amazing video. I, I watched it and I was blown away by it. And I so it is linked below in the video notes. Try to watch it this week if you can. Um, subscribe to his channel. Uh, he's He's got so many uh, good videos on his channel. I'm a huge fan. And uh, I'm going to bring up his principles before protocols uh, throughout the night because they do apply. Um, the other thing, I understand one of our viewers tonight has a birthday, Darvit New, and I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, happy birthday to you. Uh, so if, uh, if you guys could say happy birthday, I would sing, but it wouldn't be a pretty sight. Uh, so we're going to talk about weight loss stalls. Who here has had a weight loss stall? Uh, who here maybe hasn't had a weight loss stall? Well, I actually do know somebody, um, Martha. Martha has not had one. Although maybe, maybe right now she's, I don't know. I think she said the other day she might be in one, but I'm just teasing you, Martha. Uh, so there's very few people who's, who like a plateau or a weight loss stall is not part of their story. Um, now, for those of you, maybe you're tuning in for the first time uh, and you don't know my background. Uh, I have been on this journey for about 10 years. I've lost uh, 145 pounds. Uh, there, uh, there I am, like some of my before pictures are there. So I, you know, when you're on a journey for that long, uh, you hit some stalls, you hit some detours. Um, these things happen. It's part of the journey. And I think that a lot of people think that if they go a week without losing weight, they're on a stall. That is just not the case because, you know, you, you, you just don't lose weight every single week. It's not a straight line. You know, it, if I was to have graphed my line from the very beginning, day one, when I was, you know, 320 or whatever it was, uh, you know, it, it would be very much like that. It would a downward trend, but up and down. And there was even some big ups and downs like you know when when my dad died i went through a long stall uh, much of it was self-induced um you know with bad choices there's different reasons for stalls um and you know the trickier ones are if you feel like you've been you know like absolutely perfect and and nothing is happening but some of them are easier to identify and so we're going to go through just a few things. Um, there are some reasons that people stall. 
Um, and sometimes it can be as simple as they've just been doing the same thing for a long time, following maybe the exact same macros, eating at exact same, you know, eating windows, times of day, doing the exact same movement if, if they're doing movement. Sometimes just that homeo, uh, it's not homeostasis is the wrong word, but but sometimes just just that that uh, not changing anything and doing it the exact same thing for a long time, that in itself your body can become used to what you're doing and just decide it's it's happy there, it's going to live there. So uh, you know that that's one of those those things. Uh, but but usually it's the more common thing, um, and especially for people who are keto i saw this a lot and this happened to me a lot when i was keto uh, for those of you that don't know i started low carb and then i went you know keto ketovore these days i'm carnivore when i was keto uh i felt like there was many times i fell into the carb creep um carb creep is is where things just you just lose track if you're not tracking <laughs> um you you lose track in you know i would sort of keep in my head how many carbs i think i had and that number just gradually got away from me and and so a little bit of carb creep got in and before i knew it to me i felt like you know i maybe in my mind i was having less than 20 carbs a day but the reality was it was more like 50 or 60 and, you know, things just kind of didn't work out. There's also a thing called hidden carbs. And I don't know if you know what that is, but it's where people don't realize that something has carbs. Um, one common area is uh, heavy cream, for example. A lot of people uh, feel or think or have been told that heavy cream has zero carbs. And in fact, if you go on Carb Manager or any of those things, uh, a tablespoon of heavy cream can, you know, some of the entries will say zero carbs. But if you have a cup of heavy cream throughout the day, you're actually consuming many carbs. So, so what happens is uh, the, the, the tablespoon of cream has a negligible amount of carbs or maybe 0.2 or 0.3, but many times over during the day you have to multiply that out so each entry might be so negligible that it doesn't count but if you were to put in a cup or a half a cup which some people do go through in a day uh that really adds up and and so that's that's called a hidden carb uh and also not recognizing uh from labels la label reading can be very very difficult and speaking of label reading that usually just happens with processed keto foods, which I don't recommend them. I understand why people want to do them. I did them back in the, you know, in my early days. Convenience, you know, you get busy. I totally get it. So, you know, I was there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge. And if, if you need them to get through in the beginning, so be it. Uh, you know, j just try to get away from it gradually if you have to or quickly if you can because they are known stallers they are known to stall people the labels can be deceiving you know it'll the, the label will say keto you know one net carb and then you find out it's got 30 total carbs and you know all these sugar alcohols and things those things do not serve you well and they can be a source of a weight stall. So think about that. Um, there's the there's too many keto treats. Some people do that, and those add up. I I always found it interesting, and I even did it uh, you know not too long ago. Once when I made something keto for a special event, I I, I never liked looking at the carb counts of those things because I knew they were too high for me. Um, and it's, you know, it was just part of my, you know, self-deception, I guess. And it, um, you know, it, it, it happens. Uh, so another common reason, and I'm giving you the food related reasons right now. There's non-food related coming. Another common reason uh, can be nuts, uh, nuts and dairy. 
uh, dare, uh, nuts was one of the very first things I gave up when I started going from keto to ketovore. I realized that nuts was something that um, when I ate them, even in small amounts, the scale didn't move. Um, and it, you know, it could be uh, something I'm sensitive to. It, it could be that they're just so, you know, a small amount of nuts is very high calorically. I know, you know, many of you say, oh, we don't need to count calories. Well, if you're eating lots of <laughs> nuts and heavy cream and all that stuff, um, yeah, you kind of do. Uh, so yeah, you can yell at me about that later. Uh, alcohol. Alcohol is another one that I have seen people get trapped in. Uh, alcohol has zero carbs. But you know, when you have it, your body has to burn that off first before it can burn anything else. It's, it's something that I have read multiple times in multiple books. And um, it, you know, it, it's just something that people don't realize. And uh, there are people who have zero carb drinks you know what a drink at a special event that is zero carbs is not the problem it's if you're having it every night you're just not your your body is just not able to burn what it's supposed to burn it's busy burning those drinks and so if you didn't know that there's some bad news for you what about non-food related uh there's things like stress there's medications, uh, there's, there's our, our, you know, our age, our movement or lack of movement. Those things can all contribute. Um, if we have underlying health issues, you know, some of us have autoimmune issues. Some of us have sensitivities um, to certain foods. Uh, for myself, there's a, there's a lot of foods that I'm sensitive to, nightshade vegetables of, of you know, most kinds, a lot of uh, spices and seasonings. Uh, I've, you know, learned to identify which ones uh, I can tolerate. But all those things play into it. Um, medication, I think I may have said that, medications that, that you're on. Um, some people don't know what their um, labs are. They don't know if they have a high fasting insulin. And doctors like Ben Bickman have come out to say, you know, it's going to be hard for you to lose weight if you don't get that insulin down. Um, and the way to get the insulin down, like, you know, cutting the carbs is one of them, but the other thing is lowering stress, uh, getting a good night's sleep, increasing your movement. All of those things help to bring that number down. And so, you know, you've got to look at this a little bit holistically, uh, you know, big picture. It's not always just the food. Uh, food is a big part of why we stall. It's a big part of you know, why we're successful too. Um, and, you know, but there's other things, there's our whole, our whole life, uh, how we're living our life, you know, are we managing our stress? Are we managing our sleep? Are we getting out, getting some sunshine on our faces uh, twice a day, at least, you know, once in the morning, once in the evening, anchoring that circadian rhythm. I used to think, you know, oh, you know, I hear people talking about that and, and I'm like, just give me, you know, 20, 30 years ago, it was just, just give me the diet. I'll follow the diet. It'll be, it'll be fine until it's not fine. And, uh, you know, if you're, if, if you've been around this space, as long as I have, you just see it over and over again, that these things matter. And, and so it's not just about you know, a perfect set of macros. It, there is no such thing, by the way, as a perfect set of macros. There's no perfect thing to follow. There's there's just a whole bunch of things that all play, you know, interplay with each other. So some of the things that you can do, we do have a handout, by the way. I want to make sure that you all know there, you know, Melissa and Bonnie, they'll, I'm sure they'll put a link or there'll be a 
a banner down there somewhere where you and it's also in the video notes you can you can download the handout it's got a whole bunch of links to various videos by different people book resources that sort of thing um, uh, there's stuff on my website that's that's linked out to that uh, because there's different things you can do uh, I have some suggestions in an article that that's called seven reasons that you've stalled and what to do about it there's some helpful stuff in there. Um, but the first thing I'm going to suggest that you do is nothing, um, especially if, the, you know, this has, like many people think they're in a stall if they haven't lost weight in a week, two weeks, three weeks. Um, I've stalled for six months before and, and I know some of you have too. And, and so I, I think don't get too excited unless you've had no inches. I saw somebody in a Facebook group today, <laughs> they were complaining that they've lost all kinds of inches, but no weight. And I'm, you know, I don't even know what to think about that because I would actually rather lose the inches because the inches is what, you know, your clothes fit better if you lose inches. You look better to the outside world throw the scale away and, and, you know, measure, measure your, your body, go buy your clothes. Um, you know, are you putting on your fat pants or, you know, are you, are you wearing the next size down? That's a much greater measure of how you're doing than, you know, the, the number on the scale. And so, you know, just, just be, be mindful that the number on the scale is one metric out of many. And don't you think that if you were, if you're doing all the right things, you're eating the proper human diet, you know, you're just eating whole one ingredient foods, you're, you're doing that every day, you're drinking water instead of soda pop, you're going out for walks, you're getting a good night's sleep, you're managing your stress. Don't you think over time that things are going to heal in your body? And that is something to celebrate. And sometimes that has to happen. Some healing has to happen before weight starts to drop off. And, you know, many people have talked about that. And, and so that is something to consider that, you know, sometimes just not changing anything, like just stay that if that's what you're doing, stay that course. You know, Dr. Barry talks about vitamin P for patients. Uh, I think uh, I think it's Kelly Hogan that says vitamin G, or maybe that's Dr. Barry too. Vitamin G for gratitude. Make a gratitude list. All the things that you did well today that you're grateful for. You know, have have an. Uh, uh, you can do that in the morning. You can do that at night. Uh, these things help your mindset. And your mindset and your outlook is one of those things that matters more than you think it does. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I did want to mention doctor, or not doctor, he's not a doctor, he should be a doctor. Coach Bronson's video, uh, Principles Over Protocols, was so good. And it talks about not, and we, we talked about this last week when he was on my channel. So I probably should put that link below as well, if you want to watch that. But we tend to get in the weeds. We tend to, you know, go all crazy about trying to find perfect set of macros, trying to find the perfect amount of protein to eat, trying to figure out, you know, how, how, how much fat we should have, um, you know, it, just really getting down into the nitty gritty. And he's just saying, just eat more protein, you know, eat as much fat as you think you need, eat as much protein, you know, uh, what your body is, you know, is asking for. Don't worry about those, you know, measuring your, your ketones and worrying about those. It's not, that's not the goal. You know, ketones are not the goal. Um, a certain macro is not the goal. Your goal is to feel better, look better, do more, be stronger. Those are the things that matter. You know, when, when those things are happening, it almost doesn't matter what is going on on the scale. If you're, if you're feeling better, looking better and are stronger, that, that weight is going to follow naturally. And so, um, 
do things like, well, the first thing on my list, of course, was do nothing. And I know some of you just don't like to do nothing. And I'm kind of like that too. I mean, I, you know, I, I've done this before too. I've been on so many stalls and sometimes I do do nothing. And other times I change things up. If you've been following me, you know, I like to change things up. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. Um, I would add exercise and movement of some kind. That is an important thing to add. Um, I would do things to manage stress. You know, there's apps, you, there's a, an app called Calm. Uh, you can get it on your phone, uh, your iPad or whatever. You can, um, you know, track, track your sleep, try to get it, try to get to bed at the same time every night. If you can turn off those screens, wear the blue blockers. If you have to, you know, look at a screen after dark, that kind of thing, Th those things help. Um, and sure you track, track your macros, but I would say track it without judgment, like just, just track to see where you're at and treat it as data to see, you know, uh, it's, it's just data, like don't get hung up on it. it it's one of those things where, um, you know, we, we, we get into those weeds and we worry about not having the right macros and, and really it, it's not going to matter that much over time. Um, eating the proper food, getting the movement, getting outside, getting the sleep over time. Those are the things that matter. Those are the principles, you know, the exact protein number, the exact fat number, those are the protocols and they, they, they're great and each of us need a different one, but it's not the same as the principles that do matter. And that is the main principle is to follow the proper human diet. And, and I think that's our goal here. That's what we're all trying to do. So um, I want to do a quick reminder about the giveaway, put in the word salt. You just need to put it in once, it can be capitals, can be small. We're gonna draw for that in the uh, at the end of the hour, if you, if you, um, don't, it's element. Did I mention it was element? It's element. And if, if, if this is not your thing, then you just don't have to just don't put in salt and there's no chance you will win. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had to mention that one more time. Um, so one of the other things you can do, and I'm just going to bring this up on the screen is what we call metabolic resets. And so I know a lot of you have done these. I've, I've done them. I, uh, hopefully you can see that. Uh, so this is a visual aid for me. Um, I've done the sardine challenge. Uh, it's uh, three days of sardines. Sometimes that will move the needle. If, if you've been stuck for six months, you know, with, and, and you've, you've uh, tried everything that we've talked about here, Sometimes a break from what you're doing, even just for a couple of days, can can help. Uh, there's the egg fast. I just recently did a three-day egg fast, and boy, did I miss meat during that time. I am happy to be back to just beef and, <laughs> and some uh, seafood. Uh, fasting. So there's, there's various ways that you can fast. A lot of you are familiar with Jason Fung and his book. Um, you know, the fast, uh, what is it called again? I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I should have written it on this little, this little sheet here. Uh, some of, uh, I, you know, there are people in my Facebook group who, who do 72 hour fasts uh, or a uh, 24 hour fast. Um, 16, eight is fairly easy to do. I often do 16, eight, uh, but not on purpose. It just kind of happens. Uh, and to me, that's the best fast at all when I don't know I'm fasting. So, uh, that may be the case for you or not, but e you know, even just having your dinner, no snacking until breakfast, not even worrying about how long that is, that can be a good enough fast for some people. It can be an improvement for some people. Um, many people do report though that a 72 hour fast is something that really benefits them. They feel really good. They get euphoric. They get, you know, they have amazing results. Um, 
I, I can't even get past 24 hours. I'm going to be completely honest. Fasting is just not something I've been able to accomplish other than 16, eight. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's just me. We're all different. Uh, if, if you're able to do a 36 hour or a 48 or 72, all the power to you. But don't do it if you don't feel good while you're doing it. I, I, I hope that you you get that. Um, okay, I need to make this a little bigger. Uh, hang on here. Okay, uh, so the other one that uh, people have done. Now, I tried this, but I, it's supposed to be 30 days bacon challenge. You eat nothing but bacon for 30 days. I only lasted two days, full disclosure. Um, I, but I've, I know people who did the 30 days did really well. I, I just, I just couldn't do it. Uh, protein sparing modified fast is another one. And, um, that, that has been very successful for a lot of people. Um, but please don't do it every day. Uh, do it, um, two, three days a week. Uh, do your research on it. Uh, I have some videos where I, I, you know, I did some recipes. I did some what I eat in a day. You can lose weight with it. I find these days that when I think about doing a protein sparing modified fast, um, I, I just feel myself going, no, I just, I, I just can't quite bring myself to do it. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't, that doesn't mean I won't do a, de a, a, a lean day. I do like the idea of just thinking about lean days now and then. So, and some, I let that happen naturally as well. You know, I'm, I guess when you are doing this long enough, you do start to listen to what your body is saying. And if I feel like having some, some really fatty meat, like brisket, I just go for it. Sometimes I like just, you know, salmon and shrimp. It's very, quite a low fat meal. And I love that too. So it, things, you know, just, just listen to what your body is asking for. And I know that's difficult in the beginning. I, in the beginning, I used to say, well, my body doesn't know if I listen to my body, I'll, I'll, I'll eat all, I'll, I'll eat all the things and be 320 pounds again. So that can take time. And there's where you need the vitamin P for patients. Another one I've done is fat fast. Now, um, I learned that from Kelly Hogan. She can do a lot of fat fasting and she can eat thousands of calories on a fat fast. I can only do a day and I find uh, if I if I go too high on it, I'm, I'm visiting the bathroom. And so we are, again, we are all different. Uh, now, these are just a few of the metabolic resets that are out there. Oh, and, and please don't get mad at me because I'm using the word fast. I've had some comments about that. It, you know, it's, it's, it's semantics. Um, I know fasting is, you know, technically the old definition or the definition that the prevailing definition out there is no food. Uh, but there's, these things are out there. People are referring to these things. I'm referring to them by what I know they're called out there. And so, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, we're just talking ideas here. Uh, we're not talking about something that has to be named a certain name in order to be correct. Um, you know, don't really care actually what it's called. Um, uh, but this is what it is. Uh, so there's, there's a few others. Uh, I, I mean, there's a lot of other ones. Uh, I understand that B Dr. Ben Bickman, he likes to do a bone broth fast every now and then. So he does 24 hours where he just drinks bone broth with, with butter in it. And, um, so that's, that's something that can be tried. We were joking around, uh, the other day about doing a, uh, jellied pig's feet fast. Um, uh, and uh, you know, uh, it, it gave me a good laugh. I was just imagining it, uh, you know, three days of jellied pig's feet. As you all know, I recently had a jelly pig's feet, uh, recipe on my channel. Um, and you know what, there's some benefits there. It it's high fat carnivore. There's a ton of collagen in it. It's easy to meal prep. You put it in the instant pot. You got three days worth of food. Hey, uh, 
you know, who wants to do that with me? <laughs> um, anyways, so before you do any, before you decide to tweak anything, you got to ask yourself, is what I'm doing now working for me? Uh, you know, try to try to go there, like try to really think about, do I need to do one of those things? Like, do I need that in my life? And, you know, I used to think I, I did, and I, I used to play with those things a lot. And, and now I'm feeling like, nah, I don't know, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, I like to stick to the meat, keep things simple. And, uh, you know, it, it's just something to think about. The other thing is to, um, Think about those other things to manage, like your your stress and your sleep and 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 all those things. Um, those are all going to be more helpful over time than you think. And and so uh, I think um, I think I'm getting talked out, and I'm going to go to questions now because I see in the uh, question column the, the numbers are building up, and I want to try to get to as many questions as I can from you guys. So I will do one last reminder about the uh, salt to type in salt. If you would like to uh, win the box of element, there's 30 sticks. This one is orange element and I will mail that to you. Uh, if your name is drawn at the end of this live. Now let's go over to the questions now. Okay. So Artie, hello Artie. Uh, so first question, uh, oh, let me get it on the screen. With carb creep and too much protein, it usually comes as a real overage of calories if you track. Should you always try to stay under protein and calories to stop the stall? Well, not necessarily, um, because there are those people out there who actually are already under eating. This is where it's important to know your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure. Uh, find that calculation. Uh, you just Google it, find it online. I, I think the moderators may have that link. And so if they do, they'll throw it in the, in the chat. That will uh, tell you what your, your base is, depending on your, your age, your height, your gender, your movement, and it'll give you a guideline. Now, remember, it's only a guideline. So if you track, and you're under that guideline, uh, lowering the calories or any macros, you know, or any of the measurements are, are probably not going to help. Um, if you're way over, that gives you a clue there as to why you may be stalled. So it is a good, a good, so find that number first and then start, you know, thinking about those other, you know, this, uh, what you're asking here. I, I would hate to tell anyone to lower their calories or their protein, especially um, without knowing that information first. Yvonne, hi Yvonne. I know for sure I have to track one month without and without scale. I stepped back on and I broke my stall for sure the wrong way. I have to track due to overeating snacking. Yes, some people do and um, you know, this is where you have to know yourself. You have to know, well, um, am I, am I a tracker? Uh, do I do better when I track? Some people do. I find that if I'm in a stall, uh, sometimes just even a few days of tracking, I'm like, okay, yeah, right. I, I, you know, uh, I, I remember now, I remember now, uh, if I'm, if I have too much dairy or if I have too much of this or, or whatever, and, and it just kind of can put you back on track sometimes. So, um, you know, it sounds, it sounds like you are knowing yourself. Okay. Uh, Martha. Hi, Martha. All my friends are here tonight. Hello guys. Here's my problem. L. Ruteri has healed me so much that I've been able to eat so many more foods that I've put on a few pounds that I can't seem to get off. Well, okay. Um, so, uh, L, L, so the, yes, you know what? I understand exactly what you're saying because I have been doing the yogurt as well. And, uh, I find that all of a sudden, I'm able to uh, tolerate things I wasn't able to tolerate before. I'm talking mostly about dairy. I'm still staying carnivore, but I'm I'm adding more dairy in. 
I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing for me. It kind of, um, it, it doesn't help my, it doesn't help my weight loss. Uh, it, my skin has been doing okay. I, I used to really break out if I had dairy, but doesn't seem to happen anymore. And my, my gut issues are also, uh, better. So I, I feel okay having some dairy, but I don't know if that is okay. So this is something I'm struggling with a little bit. So I, I understand that. Um, you, you guys, I don't have this all figured out in case, in case you think I do, I don't, I'm, I'm doing this along with you, just sharing the experience of, you know, what I've been going through. Uh, yes, Martha, it's, it's, the, it can be the dairy. Uh, don't you love it? Um, let's see here. Uh, think for yourself. I'm very excited about this live. I'm on the struggle bus stalled and can't get back to my weight when I was being perfect keto. I almost gave up this weekend. So, uh, think for yourself. I have, um, I understand that and please don't give up. Like I have a mantra that I say to myself, uh, sometimes when I'm on the struggle bus, cause I get on the struggle bus sometimes, sometimes I give in, but I never give up. Please don't ever give up that. I mean, what is the alternative? Like for me, if I gave up, I'm struggling sometimes, you know, if I gave up, what would I do? Go back to eating standard American diet, go back to 320 pounds. I don't think so. There, there's no way I'm giving up. I just have to move past it and, and, you know, don't give up. That's, that's the last thing. I'm glad you didn't. You said almost, so I'm glad you didn't. Uh, Anna T, what's your position on allulose and its benefits? Um, I can only imagine you're talking about all those videos that have been coming out lately about how people are, um, instead of going on Ozempic, they are taking allulose. I don't know how I feel about that. I know, I know that there are, uh, I guess, I, I guess there's been some studies that show it's almost as beneficial as Ozempic. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I've, I, I, I do well without it. Uh, why bring it back? Um, but if somebody is on Ozempic and they want to, you know, get that medication out and try allulose instead, um, sure. Uh, you know, if that's going to help you, I, I, I would say it's, it's probably better than, than the drug because that drug has a lot of side effects from what I understand. So, you know, that's, that's something that you will have to think through for yourself. Now, if you're asking me of my position on it as a sweetener, I'm really trying to avoid all sweeteners, <laughs> including allulose. So, um, you know, it depends on your reason for, for asking, I guess. Darvit, thank you for the birthday wishes. Sorry, I'm late. YouTube is awful. Even when I tell them to notify me, I have the same problem, uh, but happy birthday to you. I won't tell you what little bird told me, but I'm sure, you know, Okay. Uh, next question here, Christy, uh, Christy, I'm Anita. I'm frustrated. I've been on a strict carnivore diet for 11 months. The last four months, months I've gained a lot of belly fat. Am I not consuming enough calories to burn the fat I've gained? I don't know. Do your TDEE, um, you know, that, uh, that link is probably, if it's not already in the chat somewhere, I will make sure it gets into the video notes of this live stream, because this is information you need to know. And it could be anything like it, it could be you're too low. It could be you're too high. I just, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know you. I can't see you. I, I just, I don't know if you're consuming enough calories or not. Um, add in some movement, of course, and do those other things that the non food things uh, to see if if that can turn things around for you. Uh, Amy says paying attention to how you feel is key. I agree that the inches mean more than a scale that is that is the truth. I would I would rather wear a smaller pair of pants 
personally than lose five pounds on the scale. And I've heard of people doing that. I'm wearing, they, they say that I'm wearing a smaller size clothes, clothing, uh, but the scale stays the same. And I'm like, yay, <laughs> yay to the smaller size clothing. Uh, Faith Farm Home. Anita, do you have experience with having a cheat day to break a stall? I I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, other than from what other people have told me, because um, to me, it depends. You have to know whether you're like how addictive your personality is. I can't afford a cheat day to try to break a stall because it wouldn't be a cheat day. It would be a cheat week and a month and all that stuff. Um, so like when, if I do have a slip or a, you know, I never have a cheat on purpose. I don't plan cheats, but I do slip. I have a slip sometimes. And, and if that happens, I'm right back as fast as I, as fast as I can do it, because I don't know if a planned cheat, if I can come back from that, depending on what it is. And, and some people are like that. So I've heard people say, so I, I've heard it both ways. Some people have said, yeah, I have regular planned cheat days. You know, I do, they, they do this carb cycling thing and they are able to come back from it. Uh, I, you know, and, and carry on and it may have broken their stall. I, I, I don't know, but I've heard the stories the other way too. I tried the carb cycling. I decided to have a cheat day because it was a birthday or this or that decided I was going to just eat whatever I want that day. Uh, but it took me a month to come back. So, you know, I, you really have to think that one through for yourself, knowing how you are, can, can you do that? I don't, I don't know if I can. And, and I would rather just stay the course, eat the meat, vitamin P, <laughs> vitamin G, <laughs> those things. Uh, okay. Artie, uh, or, oh, no, this is Bonnie answering already. Uh, Bonnie says, remember that to keep carbs low or eliminate them totally, prioritize protein with the fat that comes with it. Don't fear the fat. Fasting can also help like intermittent fasting. Yep, I agree with that statement very much. Uh, Ron, uh, hi, Ron. It's so nice to see you here. Uh, yes, this background, I love this background too. It's uh, not too far from where I live. Uh, Rage and Cage and Carnivore, what do you say about sweet and low? I have two packets per day, also diet sodas. I can't get my husband to stop the diet sodas. Um, maybe try the, the bubbly or the, I don't know what you guys have in the States. We have bubbly here. It's like a cell, a flavored salsa water. Uh, maybe I think you guys have LaCroix, something similar to bubbly. Uh, you know, the packets, I would say, get rid of those as soon as you can, because my understanding is the pack packets have dextrose in them. They have to have like because they're granulated, they've got to have that filler. And and so they are the packets are basically sugar. Um, if you if you need to have something sweet, uh, go with stevia drops, uh, something like that, that doesn't have the white powder. It's the white powder that is the issue. Um, so yeah, gra gradually get off the diet soda for sure. Um, now I saw Dr. Barry and Nisha one night talking about how they got off their diet soda kick by they kept watering it down with club plain club soda, or maybe it was something like the LaCroix or whatever. So gradually it became less and less. So instead of a whole glass of say diet Pepsi, it was, you know, half a glass and half a glass of seltzer water. And they reduced that down until they just gave it up. So maybe try something like that. Jennifer, has anyone found keto actually making their skin worse or dry? I know you have rosacea. I have been keto some years now and it hasn't helped my dry skin at all, working with my dermatologist. Um, you know, maybe increasing your fat just slightly uh, like I, I, you know, don't go eating sticks of butter or anything like that, but, uh, some, sometimes just a little tweak, you know, a little more fat, 
Um, now, uh, you know, I've been doing some different things. A lot of people actually have commented that my skin looks better these days. Um, so I kind of attribute it doing the L Riteri yogurt. I feel like that's got some benefit. I feel like, you know, doing a clean carnivore, um, my, my skin and my hair do better. Um, and uh, I've also been, the last two weeks I've been uh, putting castor oil on my face at night. Uh, castor oil is like a magic oil, it has some, you know, other benefits too. I decided I was, you know, I saw somebody else uh, talking about it on, on YouTube. I thought I'm going to try it on my face at night. Uh, I, I think it's good stuff, but, um, you know, those are a couple things to try for, you know, uh, your, your dry skin. Uh, Jacinta, would you ever consider opening your group to everyone? My husband doesn't get on YouTube, but he's all over Facebook. I told him to stay out. The group is women only. The problem is, is that group has been women only long before I ever had YouTube long before like it, it it started out as a woman support group for her more like this is back when i was like pre-menopause uh so more than 10 years ago it started out as a support group for for women and their hormones and their you know female issues and they like it that way i don't i don't know if you know i'm you know i am certainly not against men i just don't know if they're ever going to be allowed in that particular group i it, it, I, I may get mutinied um i do have you know a private facebook group or not a, fa um, a private uh, youtube membership there are some men in there um so i i don't know i don't know if that's what he's looking for though because it's not the same as as the facebook group um, yeah, so I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that at, at this moment in time. Um, but I feel for him. <laughs> uh, Darvit, uh, hormones get me. Even if you're menopausal, women don't realize they still have a cycle and it still affects your body. Raising insulin for a week and there is nothing you can do but wait it out. Horm yeah, hormones for women are definitely... Uh, yeah, definitely something that that can make or break you. Wow, we're at, we're at 46 minutes. I just want to, you know, let you guys know that. Um, so I'm going to try to quickly get through the rest of the questions. Put in salt if you want to win the element, if you haven't already. Uh, Jennifer, anyone have issues with eggs? I'm not allergic. They upset my gut. I've tried just yolks. I've tried organic. I love them too, so it's rough. I think a lot of people do have issues with eggs. Now, normally it is the whites, but you say you've just tried the yolks. Try a week without any eggs or, or a couple of weeks, and then you'll probably know the answer. Jacenta, I seem to have to keep my fat very low or I will get loose stools, but I'm not new at keto. You know, uh, fat is a lever that you can use to uh, regulate your stools. And yeah, if you have, if your stools are very loose, lowering the fat can definitely help. Um, so, I mean, but that's, that's your number. So that's, that's your body saying, this is how much fat to give me. There may not necessarily be anything wrong with that. And, and so, you know, take that in that, uh, in that light. Jennifer, how long do you do the protein sparing modified fast for a few months or a few weeks? I did it for four weeks, two to three days per week. And during that time, I did lose weight. I think I lost 15 pounds, but then I couldn't go back and do it again. It was too hard for me. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, it really depends. And I don't recommend it for anyone who's ever had any eating disorders because I felt, I felt my mind snapping a little bit here and there. Uh, we're all different though. It may be just the thing for you. I, do, I don't know. But do not do consecutive days. Do not do it for a long time. Try it one day and then have a refeed that like, you know, do normal keto or carnivore the next day and then try it again. Don't, you know, don't, it's, it's not more is more in this case. Definitely less is more. Claudia, have you noticed any worsening of gut health around the time of stalling? Any other food recommendation aside from L. Ruteri yogurts, kimchi, and sauerkraut for gut health? 
I I would say um, I have not noticed that um, during a stall. It's it's no different. Um, so I I find that the yogurt worked best for me. I get terrible heartburn still if I try sauerkraut and kimchi. I want them to work <laughs> for me, but I, I'm very sensitive to that still. And so I'm going to try a couple months of the yogurt before I try any of those things again. Um, now, uh, any other food recommendation, Dr. Chafee would say, eat the meat, be patient, and eventually it'll heal. So uh, there's that. And I just haven't got there yet. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jorg Singh, the Schweinehaxen fast. I love it. I, I think, I, I think, uh, sounds like you're going to do it with me. Uh, question, do you take a supplement to help you sleep? I do not. If so, what do you recommend? I don't, but I've heard people say to take magnesium at night, magnesium glyconate at night. Um, and I think, so if any of you out there see this question, I think there's a couple of them that some people have tried at night. Uh, for me, it is just, um, it is, you know, definitely, I do keep up my electrolytes during during the day. The uh, not have, like doing the blue blockers, if you have to have screen time in the evening, like trying to get that morning sun, those things are, are helpful. Uh, Kim C, any thoughts on glycine causing a stall example in coffee? I've never heard of that. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I don't have it in my coffee. Um, and so I don't, I don't know. I don't know how much you need, how much glycine you need to make your coffee actually taste sweet, or are you just using it as a supplement in your coffee? There, I mean, some people take glycine, it's an amino acid, and some people just take it as a supplement, which is a little tiny, tiny little pinch of it so they've got a little scoop that's like about an eighth of a teaspoon or something uh, so i don't i'm not quite sure how like if you're taking a teaspoon or a tablespoon um it's unknown to me what what that would cause angela would a sardine fast help my stall possibly um but look at all the other things in the handout first i do feel that anybody who wants to try one of those metabolic resets that i put up on the screen earlier watch dr i keep calling him a doctor he's gonna love this if he watches this watch coach bronson's <laughs> video principles before uh protocols um before you try one of those because those are sort of an, an extreme thing to try but it is possible i'm not going to say i'm not i've done it and yes it helped break a stall for me uh, so uh susan i wonder if eating all of those sardines is helping your skin i bet you that plays into it uh so so i eat seafood at least once a day uh it's either sardines or salmon normally, or sometimes it's a salad with sardine, salmon, chicken, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes oysters, but mostly it's sardines and salmon. So it could be, it could be, it can't, it certainly can't hurt. Uh, Jacenta, I told him that Anita, I said, honey, you'll be scarred for life. <laughs> Uh, Kimberly, could you recommend a good collagen? What do you think about the Armra? I have not tried it. I don't use the commercial collagens. I use uh, my collagen soup. I have that a lot. I make collagen. I I um, it, I use it, it. So fatty meats have got all that natural collagen in it. There is. We did a live stream. It was all about collagen, and um, you know maybe one of the moderators could link that in the in the comments if they can find it um we we covered everything we covered all the different types of collagen we covered different recipes um we talked about you know the 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 commercial collagen and the gelatin what the what the differences were and and where i would use one or over the other i used to use collagen in in my coffee every morning um but now i get so much collagen in my diet that i've i've sort of let the commercial ones go um, but that, I mean, so I don't really know which one is the best one. I've heard of Armra, but I don't have any personal experience with it. 
Jen, my husband of 80 finds it difficult at times to consume enough protein. He used to have a whey protein shake on a fairly daily basis. Uh, is there a better protein powder recommended? So, um, you know, whey can be iffy for some people. Some people tolerate it just fine, but I would look at something like Equip. It's a uh, protein isolate. It's very clean. Um, definitely there are some uh, clean protein powders out there and that that is uh, actually one of my favorites. So, so take a look at the ingredients on that and and see what you think about that it, it probably would be better for him than the whey protein um and i but i get that as a lot of people in this uh age group do have trouble getting all the protein recommendation in uh linda you, linda you are glowing thank you uh darby knows this little bird very well yes this little bird we both know her um uh, Becky, thank you, Anita. You have been inspire in. I can't talk. You have been inspiring for me. Hopefully, I'll be at my goal weight by the time I retire. I'm at a stall right now for many months. Vitamin P, vitamin G. Download the handout. Um, we're gonna draw. We're, we're, you know, uh, yeah. I, before we get to the draw, Becky, download the handout um, and and look at some of those videos and and links and. Uh, you know, a lot of us are right along there with you and it, it, it's it's going to happen. Just keep doing proper human diet, you know, do, do the things I mentioned every day. They will add up. They're cumulative over time. Let's draw. We're going to go to the draw. So we're just going to bring that on stage. Uh, we have 149 entries. We need a drum roll. Okay, here we go. Elena Kitavor is the winner. Okay, so Elena, what I need you to do is to send me an email at ketogenicwoman at gmail.com. I'm going to need your address so that I can mail this to you this week. So if, uh, if you could do that uh, within the next day or two, that would be great. And I'll get this out to you. So thank you guys for entering. Uh, I think, let me just look at the question. We have time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, okay, so, uh, and, oh, okay, I answered both sides of it, so awesome. Um, so, yeah, uh, so that's the end of the question. So we're almost at the end of the hour, so that was really good timing. I hope that you have found this useful. Now, I want to say that next week I have a special guest. Her name is Reverend Kathy Dixon, and she is going to talk about a program that she runs. Uh, it's, it's a faith-based program for uh, people who are um, having issues with food addiction, and I'm looking forward to talking to her. She's lost 100 over 100 pounds, I can't remember the exact number, um, a few years ago. Uh, she lost an awful lot of weight and and she is, you know, using her faith principles to keep her on track and to keep other people on track. So I think you'll find it a very interesting talk and I hope that you'll join us. And we will be opening it up to questions, of course, just like we do at every live stream. So I hope that you guys have learned something tonight. And uh, I just appreciate you so much that you spent your Sunday night with me for this hour. I try to keep it informative with things you can take away. And um, I appreciate every single one of you for the support on these live streams. So good night all. Uh, love you and see you next time.